Hi guys, my name's Sam. If this is your first time here, then welcome. If you've viewed my content before, then welcome back. So today's video is all about CAD software, that's computer aided design, and specifically SketchUp. I did a video previously on how to download SketchUp for free. Um, I'll put a link up here to, to that and how, how you do that. There is a online version that you can use, but I find it clunky, um, a bit laggy. It depends on how good your internet connection is and it has less features than the version that you can download. So I thought I'd do a little mini series of videos, basically just to teach people how to use SketchUp and some of the different functionalities that it has. So I'm gonna do four different videos. The first one, which is today's video, is how to create basic shapes and extrusions. The second video is how to create and edit components and why this is important. The third video is gonna be how to create and assign layers. And the final video is gonna be how to import existing models from the 3D warehouse. Using a CAD software package like SketchUp is really useful because it allows you to really visualize your layout um, and play around with different options and, and configurations. You can model things to scale so you can see how and where things will fit in, whether you like certain layouts, and it also allows you to almost see problems before they occur because you can position everything exactly where it's going to go. You can see if having a drawer in a certain location is going to clash with another bit of furniture that you've built. Um, so it really is a valuable tool when you're designing and planning your band build. Let's get to it. Okay, so let's make a start. Have you already downloaded SketchUp as per my previous video? Then just open SketchUp up. And we'll come to this page. You just need to click start using SketchUp. take a minute or two to open it up and then it will come in and open a new sketch open up a new sketch um, so these three lines here the uh, red green and blue are your different axes your x y and z axes uh, I won't worry too much about them but it can be a good reference point to start your sketch um, so to move around the sketch Zoom, zoom in and out, use the middle scroll button on the mouse and then if you want to rotate the view, hold that middle button down um, and drag the mouse around like that. So I'm actually going to open up a sketch that I previously created just to show you um, something that you can create. Um, So this is a, a really simple layout that I created for my van. You can see that I've got the started sketching the fixed bed across the back of the van. Underneath that, this is the fridge. I've got my little mini wardrobe here, the microwave, and you've got my bench seat with the pull-out bed currently in the pulled-out configuration there. Um, so there's nothing really complicated about that it doesn't look particularly fancy um actually really easy to do um so i'm just going to show you how you would start off doing that in sketchup so a thing that we probably use the most is the rectangle tool so that's this icon here so you just click on that and then you can place where you want to start your rectangle. So let's say I'm going to try and recreate this floor plan that I've got there. Um, I'm going to start the rectangle there. So you left click on your on your mouse, and then once you've done that first click, it will drag the re rectangle to the size that you need. And you'll notice that down here it's got these numbers that change as you drag it. So um, what you can do is click 
to confirm the creation of the rectangle and then put in the numbers afterwards so currently that's a 1.6 wide by 3.7 meters long so if I click that there that's the size that it will be if I go into that box if I then start typing some numbers so I know my van's actually a bit wider than that let's say it's 1800 by four meters it will then to type in those numbers press enter and it will then change that rectangle that you've just made um, to those dimensions that you've put in so that's correct great we've drawn a rectangle um, let's say that you want to mimic the uh, thickness of a, a floor, the floor that you're going to put in your van. So uh, what we can do is then extrude that rectangle. So this push-pull uh, icon here, the kind of uh, rectangle with an arrow coming out the top, that's your push-pull tool. And that is what transforms what is a 2D rectangle into a 3D shape. So I've selected the tool, I then click on the rectangle and you can see as I, once I've clicked on it, I can move that up and down and it will extrude that rectangle into a 3D shape. And you'll notice down here, it's giving a distance again. So that's the thickness that you're creating. So that's you know a meter thick, that's a bit thick for ply. So let's say we're gonna have a, I don't know, 12 mil, uh, ply for and in the van so I will click it at 97 we don't want 97 so then just type 12 press enter it takes it down to the desired uh, size of 12 mil so that's great we've got a floor in our van um, that's that's going to be ply so let's make that look a bit more like ply, shall we? So um, in my trays on the right hand side, I will um, assign that a material of plywood so that it looks a bit more realistic. If you can't view these trays on the right hand side, so there's various different ones. Um, I've got a materials tray, a components tray, uh, styles and layers um, if you can't see those you need to go into window manage trays um, and then tick or untick the various options so let's simplify that a little bit we're going to untick everything um, apart from materials um, so now you'll see that there's a lot less in these trays on the right hand side I've just got materials so um, now what we're going to do is assign a material to that ply flooring so I'm just going to click on that it then creates that bucket and you can see that by clicking on that top surface it's turned it into a ply effect and you will notice that it doesn't hasn't assigned that appearance to all of the faces of that ply flooring and one way to do that so let's just undo that you can do that by pressing ctrl z same as any other windows program um, and then let's come out of this materials thing just by pressing escape or oh, that doesn't seem to work okay let's click that arrow so this is just the selector arrow and let's right click on that surface collect and select and click select and then select all connected and that has then selected all the surfaces of that uh, ply floor that we created then we can go back into the materials tray click that wooden ply plywood and then click on our flooring and you'll notice that it has then applied it to all of the 
faces of that plywood floor that we created and I'm just zooming in using that joggle wheel on your mouse and then to rotate and pan round hold that middle wheel down and move your mouse around so great we've got a, um, a floor for our van why don't we start building some furniture so let's try and recreate some of this uh, bench framework that I've got here so I know these are 44 by 44 mil uh, timber if we weren't sure about that we could go into this tape measure tool here zoom right into the area we're interested in then SketchUp will snap to the intersection there and click on that click to the edge there and it says down here length 44 mil uh, so we can just check that square by again going to the end of that beam there up to this corner as we hover over that i haven't actually clicked anything yet it says 44 mil on the screen so we actually need to do that final click but it also does come up here up in this window or this box down here wherever you've got to it'll give you a length so we're going to start this framework in the corner of my floor there so again we're going to choose the the rectangle you notice that you can choose different shapes the rectangle is the default shape so let's click on that and then going to place it on the corner of the plywood floor and drag it out we're drawing on the blue axis so um, you can obviously go on to other axes right there you can see that the color has changed we want to be on the blue axis and we want it 44 by 44 so i'm just going to drag it to an approximate size and see it's not quite right 73 by 73 but i'll just click that and then type in the dimensions 44 44 press enter and it has created um, a rectangle of the correct size now just as we did before we want to give that some 3d geometry so i've gone on to the push pull tool and we're going to extrude that rectangle up and let's say that that is 500 high so we could drag it to size and move it very carefully get it to exactly 500 i'm looking at this box here or we can just type in 500, press enter, and it's exactly 500. You will notice that SketchUp has merged the two components together. So um, we've got the plywood floor there, and then we've got this upright 44 by 44 beam and we've kind of lost that edge there it's merged it all into one component that's not really what we want because if we then want to uh, try and differentiate between that plywood floor and this uh, leg of the framework we can't really do that and similarly if we wanted to go back and edit this Similarly, if we wanted to uh, just move this upright beam, it then becomes very difficult to do so. In fact, it's impossible to do it. So say we thought, oh, okay, I don't actually want that in the corner of my uh, ply flooring. I want to offset that, say 50 mil in. 
as it stands, you can't actually do that. You can stretch the object out by 50 mil, make it 50 mil wider. Now you could take, now you can't do it. It has joined those two geometries together. Um, so that's a bit of a pain. So what we need to do is to create two separate components, i.e. the ply flooring and then the timber upright that's going to start to form our framework for our bench seat. And that is what the next video is all about. So I'm not going to go into that at the moment, but what I would say is have a play just creating some different shapes. So you've got the circle tool there. So again, with that one, you can just click in the center, drag out to the radius that you want. So you want a hundred mil radius. And then we could push and pull that up to the height that we want. You can also do just lines. So say we want some weird shape. It's not symmetrical. Right, something like that. And again, we can make that 3D by using the push pull tool. It's also a freehand kind of arc tool. I don't know, it's not particularly useful to be honest. Um, so that closed the geometry, yeah. So that should, we should then be able to give that some shape. So let's just have a bit of a recap of some of the things that we've covered in this video. Um, we've covered how to draw basic shapes, including rectangles. We've covered how to transform those 2D shapes um, into 3D shapes using the push pull tool. We've quickly had a look at how to show and assign different materials. So we just looked at woods, but there's all kinds of things in here. So let's say we wanted to make this metal, we can make that top one have this metal appearance. And we've also covered the measure tool, so when we're not sure how big things are, we can click on here on the tape measure tool, and then by clicking from one point to another, we quickly see how big things are. Um, other useful things, this is pan tool up here, that will move the sketch around the screen without rotating. We've then got the orbit tool, which is the same thing as holding down that middle mouse button. And then we've got the selector tool over here, which allows you to select different faces and edges. Thanks for watching. If you did find that video useful, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Hit the subscribe button if you haven't done so already and hit the bell as well so you don't miss out the future videos in this little mini series. Uh, so yeah, thanks again for watching and stay tuned for more content.